Hello, this is Brad. It's March 9th, 2013, and uh, this is an update from my last video, which I think was late December or early January, more than a couple of months ago. Um, over here, the, all the Curacavica plants that I had um, inside the greenhouse, I've now, oh, the, the ones that were um, pretty large, I've moved outside. They're almost all blooming with the yellow and orange flowers. Um, still haven't plotted anything here. We uh, we did have a um, a rain over the last couple of days, so the ground is a little bit uh, uh, looser. Um, it was pretty dry here, so it got pretty uh, hard out there. And so I think it's about time to actually start rototilling and uh, perhaps planting some of this stuff. I've moved some of the plants around, other than the Curacavica. I used this window and the one in the kitchen, or the dining room, as a place to kind of try to rehabilitate old plants, or in a couple of cases like this here, I'm trying to grow, reuse an old pot to grow a Syriaca seed in. Some limited success. This is a Fruticosa seed that did grow that way. I just reused an old pot where the um, other seedling had died off. Um, and Fruticosa is related to the Physocarpa. They're both from South Africa, and um, it also has puffy green seed pods. Um, and um, it's kind of a new one. I, <clears throat> I have a seed packet. I haven't planted all the seeds for that or the uh, replacement seed packet that Butterfly Encounters sent for uh, the Syriaca. Um, the Syriaca I'm having a little bit better success with and the Fruticosa are doing quite well. These are Incarnata that are suffering. This one lost all its leaves. This one's down to one leaf. I don't really know what the problem is. Um, but Anyway, uh, some of those have turned around. We'll uh, do a quick review here of what's over in my uh, window now in the dining room. Also, plants that were on the brink of death that have some of which have come back. Um, or a few other cases. Um, this one I keep inside. It's a cordif cordifolia. Uh, it's the reason I do is because out of the seed packet was the only one uh, that actually sprouted and it's actually doing pretty well. It's quite tall but flimsy. If the, <clears throat> before I had this um, stake in here it was flopped up against the window. Uh, but it just continues to get taller and taller. Um, this one here is an ice ballet in Carnata and it's recovering nicely. This is a tuberosa that was at the level of two leaves for a long time. It's in a pretty big container. It has been since I transplanted it uh, from the uh, peat pellet. But now it's <laughs> it never got any bigger than two leaves, and now it's down to one leaf. Uh, more pro problem plants. This one is a uh, tithonia, actually, not a milkweed. The rest are milkweeds. This is um, a mystery milkweed plant. This is my best recovery story. This one had looked terrible. It was just a tiny little withered up Incarnata, and now this is my best Incarnata plant, uh, by far. Tuberosa that's recovering, a couple more that are down to just one or two tiny leaves. This one's probably dried up for good. Another Incarnata that's coming back. And a Syriaca from the original set of Syriaca, one of two or three plants that sprouted out of the whole packet. Um, this one in particular, all the leaves had died off, and the stem was kind of a light yellow. Only the root was left, and it came back. I put it in a bigger pot, so uh, hopefully um, I will have some good success there. This is my uh, orchid. It's doing pretty well. And uh, head outside to the greenhouse so we can update what's going on in there. I got a new couple of new um, shelves. This is a plastic shelf here and that large plastic shelf in the far back wall, the white one. All right, do a quick tour here. Um, these are Cursavica. They haven't been getting too much bigger than this, but they're all in good shape, I think. So they, uh, I'd just like to transplant them outside, I think. I did have some success with a broken branch of one of my other Curacidica, one of the larger ones that's uh, outside on the deck. 
I took pieces of a stem that broke off, uh, put a little bit of rooting hormone on them, transplanted them, and they're actually starting to come out. This is how they, how this is how the original Curacavicas from Live Monarch looked when I got them in the mail. They were just short little things like this with fewer leaves than that, but the leaves were no bigger than that with a small, uh, maybe half inch diameter root ball on the bottom. In this case, I just planted the stem right in the sand and uh, it worked out. I think there was only one that didn't grow. Uh, this is another stem one and I can't remember where I put them all, but anyway, that looks like it might be a good technique. Ah, this one here, also a stem one. Anyway, Cursivica, this one is probably Physocarpa. No, it's Cursivica as well. It's probably one of the best from seed Cursivicas I have. In general, the taller plants like these are almost always um, Physocarpa. Physocarpa is clearly the best, the best plant uh, that that I've tried to raise from seeds. This one, in particular, says it's an incarnata, but I think that it doesn't look like an incarnata. It's probably mislabeled. Um, more cursivica. They also have been doing well. They do get, they do get these yellow and now green aphids on them, which I've tried to combat in different ways, including releasing. Um, ladybugs twice. Um, a lot of these plants are quite old plants, like these are all Ice Ballet Incarnata and they just they don't get any bigger than this. They grow a little bit and the leaves fall off. Some of the leaves turn turn this rusty color. I don't know if it's because they get too cold out here or what. Uh, these have so many tuberosa that are like this. They just have never gotten any bigger. These are probably six months old now and they just stay at these runts. Uh, I do have a few that have gone pretty good. Um, there are also some Cursivica that have stayed runts. This one here is a uh, catnip. I've got a few of those mixed in. Tuberosa. I uh, don't know what that is. I won't identify everything, but... Um, Oh, and the Speciosa have been almost a complete bust. They did grow nice and long and tall, but they were floppy right from the beginning. I tried an experiment where I stake some up and put them in larger pots. This is a fairly good sized pot, uh, but it um, just died off. This one too, I mean it's got a little bit of green left. But the Speciosa, these are a couple more Speciosa. They, those have really been struggling. Ah, there's one of my ladybugs. <laughs> Just a few left in here. I took them outside as well. Okay, this is one of my best tuberosas. Um, it's also probably quite old. Uh, tuberosa, tuberosa. This is probably my tallest fascicularis. But in general, the fascicularis have done better than the tuberosas. Uh, these tall ones here are um, Tithonia torch, or Mexican sunflowers. They're doing quite well. They are a little bit more sensitive to water, so if you don't water them, they just bloop. Um, they just really wilt quickly, but they usually come right back. Tuberosas, old one. These are some of the first ones I transplanted. Never got bit much bigger than this. You know, these could be the fault of these containers. I don't think I washed these out very well. They could have had some sort of fungus or something in them, which has attacked the plants. I'm not sure what. Maybe it's they get too cold. They're just basically been runts this whole time. Um, this is um, almost guaranteed this is a physocarpa. Yep. Anything that's big and healthy looking is most likely a physocarpa. Ah, now this physocarpa is getting attacked by lots of aphids. I usually just crush them like this with my finger. I'd think the ladybugs would just go to town on them, but they don't. Um, they do eat some of them, I guess. Oh, that's actually a cursivica. This here is my best from seed plant, clearly. It's my actually my tallest plant that I've grown on my own now. It exceeds the height of the um, Curacivicas that I got from stem. This is a physocarp I got from my neighbor's plant, Wes. It's over two feet tall now, just barely over two feet tall. It's the first, first two seeds I tried to grow from his plant. Uh, the physocarpas I have are a mixture of uh, Butterfly Encounter and Wes's seeds. And my uh, Curacivica are also a mix of Butterfly Encounter uh, and um, seeds I got from my own adult plants. 
This is a, a zinnia, another nectar plant. It has this shape of leaf and some more uh, Mexican sunflower, tithonia, another physocarpa that I just transplanted, linaria. These are doing pretty well, but they've kind of stalled at this height. I transplanted this one as an experiment to see if it would grow taller. It's in a peat plot pot. I just transplanted the whole pot, so we'll see how that works out. Um, the um, catnip does quite well. These are doing pretty well. These happen to be Aerocarpa. I have three that's, uh, kinds of milkweed that start with E. Aerocarpa, Aerosa, and uh, Exaltata. All three of them have done, ver have done relatively well. And I count amongst the seven varieties that have done well around here. Uh, more Tuberosa. The tall ones are the Physocarpa. The shorter ones are Cura Savica here. All doing fairly well. Tuberosa again more generally runs. Um, these are in kind of small pots, I'll admit, uh, but tuberosas. Um, and um, anyway, I've, try, I've, I've tried to transplant a few of the tuberosa to see if they would grow in a larger pot, but um, this is, uh, you know, these haven't been doing great. Anyway, I feel pretty good about the physocarpa. And there's more uh, exeltata over here, which are the tall ones that are doing nice and other kinds. Fruticosa is a new one that I'm just trying. haven't even planted a full seed packet yet. I'm kind of trying to cut back on the number I plant because uh, it's getting to be a little bit overwhelming just keeping taking care of the ones I do have. I staked up all my floppy speciosas to see if I could get them, <laughs> if that would help. They were all looking so sad and they never got any did anything except flop over the side. But staking them up maybe was a mistake or they were going to die anyway. They're just barely clinging to life in general. The few here that look like they're doing a little bit better are actually Physo or, uh, fascicularis, like this one and this one. The speciosa in general look just like this, just barely clinging to life. Here's maybe one of the better ones. So, uh, not sure what I did wrong with those. Uh, another uh, zinnia. And I think these are probably all Curosavica. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is a new kind that I'm just trying. I haven't even planted a full packet yet. So I'm mostly just filling in um, old pots that where the original plant died and a few that I grew in peat pellets. Um, this is a purpuracens. I'm excited about these because I think they'll be very pretty. They have the photographs I see, they have very striking purple flowers. So I'm hoping those do well, and it looks like they probably will. Uh, another linaria, more of these runt tuberosas. I don't even know what this plant is, but it's kind of interesting. It must have been got seeded in here accidentally. This looks like a fascicularis. I can't even read the signs on them up here, but and these are either. Aerocarpa or Aerosa. Uh, and so, again, not doing too bad. Down here, this is one of the new plants, Fruticosa. Again, it should have a swan shaped um, rather than a spherical shaped light green puffy seed pod like the uh, Physocarpa. So, hope, hopefully, these will do just as well as the Physocarpa. These were, you know, early ones that did well at first, but again, these are the uh, Ice Ballet uh, Incarnata. They're down to one leaf a piece here that doesn't look so good. I really don't know what the problem is. Uh, maybe I need to move them inside. Speciosa that's died. I can guarantee you that's a Speciosa, so floppy. I should just let them be floppy, I guess, is the moral of the story. Um, tuberosa. Speciosa, two tuberosas in one pot. And these are another one of those, these are Erosas. Erosas are in general done well. That's a fascicularis. Yeah. And um, I've staked them up because they were also floppy and I was concerned they would have the same fate as the Speciosa, but I don't think that's true. Uh, more fascicularis, fascicularis, tuberosa. This is a. Um, I think this was a mix of seeds called uh, Coastal Sage Scrub. Just did one pot of that. This is getting to be quite large, actually. What is this? That's a fascicularis. So that's one of my best fascicularis right there. Um, this is a um, catnip. The catnip, uh, this plant looked 
totally deflated last night, but I gave it water, sprung right back. More fascicularis. Uh, this one is probably this one is a physocarpa, zinnias, perisivica, probably a purpurescens, more zinnia, more fascicularis, more fascicularis, and down here, uh, that's this is one of my best speciosas. Uh, this one is probably an areocarpa, areocarpa, and tuberosas mostly, and I got some down here. I got uh, fascicularis and other, uh, as well as non milkweed plants, like uh, this one here is a chia, it's a kind of sage. That's uh, zinnia, these are Mexican sunflowers. This is probably another kind of sage, oh, that's a tithonia. They get as much sun down here as they should. Again, the big ones are the zinnias and nectar plants, and the small ones are the, um, these are probably speciosas. Yep, speciosa. They like to be floppy for some reason. Uh, <clears throat> so, but in general things are going pretty well here. Okay, uh, fascicularis, uh, zinnia, probably some sort of a sage. Uh, that's curasavica. This one is a sage. Blue sage, all fascicularis, all fascicularis here. Some of them died off. I'm trying to replant Syriaca and Fruticosa plants in their place. And here's the m bulk of my uh, Linaria, which are all healthy looking, but they have basically stopped growing. So we'll see uh, with my experiment over there if transplanting them helps them grow bigger. This is one of my only Syriaca plants. It's still alive. It hasn't really been doing great, but it's still there. And probably a Curasavica that's having trouble. All these runt ones are tuberosas and are quite old. They just don't seem to grow. It's interesting, they have tons of small little leaves that come out, but they just don't grow. Um, these here are just dead ones. I'll probably just reuse the pots. And up here, another purpurescens, more purpurescens, uh, fruticosas in the back here, uh, and then ovalifolias. They don't seem to be doing as well as the purpurescens. Hopefully they'll do something. Syriaca. Had more than a few Syriaca come out, but uh, still not that many. Ah, this one is probably, looks like it's on its deathbed here. Fruticosa. Be surprised if that one lived. Um, and purpurescens down here. Another Fruticosa, etc. And couple more down here. These are different kinds of sages. I don't think there's any uh, milkweeds in this bunch. So, uh, finally brings me to this table, which this one has been a real surprise. The Exaltata um, has done very well. Um, these were planted at the same time as these small ovifolias and some of these purpuracin plants. So. In light of that, the uh, Exaltata has done wonderful. And then over here we've got a mix of things. Syriacas, tuberosas, curasavicas. And I am uh, have a few more that I'm trying to s germinate from seed. I'm doing an experiment here where I'm reusing old pots and I'm just um, putting seeds in there. There's a couple coming up. There's a fruit two fruticosas are popping up. I've already had one fruticosa. And then there's a few uh, Syriaca. And then we have more peat pellets. Um, looks like another fruticosa is coming up. The rest of those that are unsprouted are Syriaca. So again, this fruticosa does, <clears throat> even with this new packet of Syriaca seeds, fruticosa has done much better. Oh, and this is another attempt to plant a broken stem. This is a um, something called Calendrinia. Speciosa, I believe it's called, or Spectabile, I think that's what it's Anyway, I have the plant outside. It's kind of a, um, yeah, the adult plant that I purchased. Uh, it's kind of a succulent looking plant, but I accidentally broke this one off and planted it here with a little bit of the rooting hormone. And it seems to actually be uh, holding in, holding together. So we'll see if it ever sprouts a leaf on it. But uh, it's been flowering every day for probably two weeks. All right.
So, um, in general, Physocarpa does wonderful, Curacevica does wonderful, Erosa, Aerocarpa, Exaltata all do very good, uh, Fasicularis is doing very well, and uh, I think there's one other, oh, the Linaria has done decently. So those, those seven will probably comprise my core set of plants. This is uh, from Live Monarch. It's just a uh, mixture of different kinds of seeds. I just threw them in here and they've been doing alright. Some of them might be milkweeds, but uh, I don't even know what kinds of plants they are. They're supposedly butterfly friendly plants. Um, it was, a, like I say, a seed mix from uh, Live Monarch. Okay, now we'll look at the deck and the area. I might even do, uh, might even do the um, rototilling or tilling today if I can uh, find some time. Um, my um, plants here are doing well. My uh, my uh, sedum spectabile has really done well. This was looking very dead earlier. These are basically the survivors. Here's the calendrinia with these uh, kind of flowers on it. Um, and um, my original uh, adult uh, Curacivicas, both the yellow variety, the silky gold, and the either the uh, silky red or the deep red, and the just regular orange and orange ones, which are just the plain Curacivica. They've been plagued by lots of uh, trouble with um, these uh, aphids, but I spray a soapy water on them. That seems to help. And of course, the uh, ladybugs, they uh, pretty much ditch the place, though, in a few days. They're, you don't see any of them around. Um, but there's no more uh, monarch caterpillars. The butterflies have left. They've left at the end of uh, February. Uh, they, of course, still some around, and I do see some come by once in a while and visit the plants. Mostly these new plants over here that are all blooming. Uh, they're all Curacevica, formerly inside the greenhouse. Um, and um, so I'm not sure what to do with these adult ones. I'm worried they might be infected with the OE uh, protozoa. Uh, I did have, of all the caterpillars I had, I had lots and lots um, on these six plants. Um, I only had two uh, chrysalises that I was aware of. One was down here. In fact, I think the remains of it are still there, right here. And that. Um, this guy cracked out, and uh, I didn't see him, didn't know what happened to him, and I found him wandering around out here on the ground. He had, um, his, his wings never unfurled, so he may have been infected with OE. I know some of the caterpillars just plain died. Uh, then I had one other caterpillar over here, chrysalis I should say, and this one I got uh, on video just as he was cracking out of his um, his uh, chrysalis and then he fell down into the weeds down here and I uh, <laughs> basically photo documented his whole uh, early life she it was actually a female one I kept her in the greenhouse a couple of days took her out on my finger <laughs> to see if uh, she wanted to fly uh, once you know that after 24 hours it took about 48 hours or more before she was ready to leave the nest but I did capture that on uh, video, so that was fun. Um, these are my Curacevica plants that I obtained as small stems from Live Monarch in the mail. They put all of them in a box, no bigger than about that big, all 12. Um, and um, then I have one plant that I purchased, also a Curacevica, but a silky yellow variety, from uh, Island Seed and Feed. This plant will look kind of sickly for a long time, but I transplanted it in a bigger pot, took it inside for several weeks, and it just really came back nicely. It's probably my best looking uh, Curacevica now. The others are just plain Curacevica, which have the yellow inner flower and the orange outer flower. There's names for the, both of those parts, which I don't recall. Um, and um, these have been doing reasonably well. They were out here in the rain. Um, this is the only one that hasn't flowered yet. The other 11 have flowered, and uh, like I say, the butterflies, I thought there would be more coming by as the clusters broke up in late February, but uh, there hasn't been as many as I thought. So I don't see, so you don't see caterpillars eating the leaves at this point, 
they'll probably have a chance to grow all summer long and uh, I hope to plant all these uh, right out here and uh, maybe even do that today along with uh, the adult plants and I'm not again a little bit undecided about what to do with these ones if they are infected with OE I would I should probably just chop them down to nubs if they're not um, then you know why do that except maybe to chop them up and try to plant each segment as a new plant which seems to work out really well uh, it's maybe even better than going the seed route okay well that's pretty much it that's a update of mid uh, mid march update of my uh, milkweed and uh, nectar plant growing efforts and uh, until next time hopefully uh, next time i make an update this area right here will be planted I've kind of scaled back my uh, designs i think i'm going to just go with a simple watering scheme using this uh, irrigation tubing. I uh, have a scheme to do that with a couple of actually sprinklers, just going back to a regular sprinkler system. I just want to get them in the ground and um, hopefully um, the runts can, you know, will live or die. I want them to get uh, either big and flourish or, you know, die off. <laughs> so hopefully more of them will flourish than die, but uh, the plan is that this area, sunny area right here, was, will be my uh, butterfly garden come next fall. All right, until next time, I'll talk to you later.